Recently, I was gifted a retro handheld game Linux system by Ann Bernick. It's the 64 gigabyte model. So if you go to Ann Bernick's website, they have different models you can get. You can see over here. And so here's the different models. Most of them comes with the 16 gigabyte firmware. And then it comes with the second card with all the games on it. So if you end up getting the 64 gigabyte plus 64, there'll be 64 gigabytes worth of games versus the 256, which will have 256 gigabytes worth of games on a second uh, flash drive. So let me show you. Here's the system with the 4,000 games. Um, and I'll show you the model that I have, 353VS. So in this first video, um, I'm going to talk about the very first thing you might want to do, which is, let's turn this off, is to create a copy of a firmware file onto um, a different flash drive. So on the top is TF1. And then the bottom is TF2. TF2 is for your games, and TF1 is for the firmware, which is 16 gigabytes. Uh, you could just get only the 16 gigabyte model, and then buy your own 64 or 256, or you can use whatever size, and then copy your own, you know, if you have your own ROMs onto there for yourself. But it's just nice to buy the 64 gigabyte one with their games on it. So you don't, we don't need to make a copy of this. The first thing they suggest doing is making a copy of the firmware, which is just a 16 gigabyte drive, flash drive over here. So today I'm gonna to talk about two ways you can do it. One way is to make a copy of this drive and then copy it onto another flash drive. You'll probably be asking, well, can I put it onto a 32 gigabyte? Can I put it on 64 gigabyte? You definitely can put it on a, a larger size memory card. Probably not smaller, but something bigger. Uh, what is the negative of doing that? Well, if you put it on a bigger flash drive, you might not be able to use the extra space because the games partition on the 16 gigabyte uh, firmware file if you make a direct copy, we'll have uh, the size of that partition probably be small. You might be able to resize it. That's the tricky part. I had problems resizing it. But anyways, the tool that you can use, which I've used, is Rufus. You can also download the firmware from their website, which I'll go over. And hopefully that will be of help for some people. So the first method I'll talk about is using Rufus to make a copy of what's on the firmware disk. So let's go do that. You'll need a card reader, which I have over here, a USB card reader. Uh, so hopefully you have something like that. So I'm gonna take this and plug this into my uh, computer. It'll detect the drive. Um, from here, I went on to uh, Rufus's website and downloaded the tool Rufus that I'll use to make a copy of it. So here's the Rufus file. It's the portable version. No. I'm actually going with the method that I don't prefer doing. So it has the device. It recognizes it's a 16 gigabyte device. Under show advanced properties, click on that. And now you can, what do you call it? Go about and clicking the save icon over here, which will make a backup of a backup image file, like a VHD file. It says over here, compressed VHDX files. So I'll show it again in case you missed it. After you load Rufus, 
By default, this option show advanced drive properties will be hidden. Click on it with the mouse. And once you click on it, you'll have the save icon enabled. Click on the save icon. And now I'm going to save it to desktop and I'm going to call it um, ab amber nick from where see over there and it's saving to de the desktop and I'm going to click on save it's going to take a while to do probably about 10-15 minutes so I'll let that finish I'll come back once it's done so this part is the part where we create a image of the original firmware SD card. Image file is almost done being created. Once it's done, it'll be on desktop. I saved it as this over here on the left side. It's a pretty big file. I can't remember it's coming from a 16 gigabyte card, so it's a 13.5 gigabyte backup file, VHD something, uh, sorry, I'm uh, horrible with names. Um, now that it's done, I can go ahead and eject my uh, SD card reader and put in the new SD card. So I pull this out, this was the original one. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know why it's so dark. There you go. Had autofocus lock. So I'm going to take the original 16 gigabyte, which is this Kyoxia, put it down, put in a 32 gigabyte card, and Go ahead and pop this and burn it. Put it in. It might not detect the drive in Rufus automatically. It actually did. <laughs> At this point, now that it's loaded, again, what I've done in the past is I closed, closed Rufus then reopen Rufus just to make sure it was detecting the right drive. But this is the 32 gigabyte drive. Originally, I had the 16 gigabyte drive that I backed up. And now I'm just going to select the image over here. Again, it's super easy. Just click select. I'm in desktop and I create Anvernic firmware file. You can see VHDX file, and all I do is click start. And I'm going to click yes. Click OK. Okay. So I'm not sure how long this will take. It takes a while because it's writing to a old SD card. It took about 10-15 minutes to do the backup and now to actually write the backup to another flash drive. It's going to take a while so I'll show it's 11.09 right now. I'll come back when it's almost done. As it's doing its thing right now, I, I want to reiterate that um, after it's done, the games partition might be pretty small and you might need to expand it in this case it's going from 16 to 32 gigabytes so you could make the games partition to extra 16 gigabytes in space there's some documentation that mentions to use disk genius to resize the partition uh, i tried actually doing this and i didn't have success in doing it after i had resized the gaming partition 
the flash drive stopped working. So um, I can't really speak about that part. I just know it's mentioned in the documentation uh, written by Anvernick. They have some documentation about it in a different down, firmware, down, firmware download, download file. Uh, it's mentioned over here in 35XXX, but that's a different story. Um, let's see how far we are with this. It's only 10%. Again, only a few minutes have passed. It's taking over 20 minutes to do the write to micro SD card. There's a second method, which is a little quicker, is to download the firmware file. In my case, I have a 353 VS, RG353 VS, and the firmware file, if you Google it, it's under this directory takes you to the firmware download page. Even though this looks like the 353VS and it says 35XX, you want to scroll down all the way to the correct version you need. In my case, mine is just RG353V, excluding the S and I can Get the firmware file from over here. I'm not sure what Android is for, but I know this is the one that was originally installed into the one that I had. So it's almost done. 10 more seconds. And I'll be able to eject the drive and try it out with the handheld over here. The reason why the second method is preferred is it's a little easier getting the gaming partition to be resized automatically. So now it's finished. Um, if I can show you on Windows 11, it didn't show the gaming partition, but let me see if I can find it if I go into properties manage. And I right clicked on this PC and I click manage. From here, click on Disk Management. It'll take a while. So right now, the gaming partition doesn't have a drive associated with it, so I can right click on there and change drive letter path to I can add it, but I'm not going to do it now. I, what I want to say is you can see it's only 5.29 gigabytes. This needs to be resized if I want to use all of the 32 gigabytes of this flash drive. And that's where Disk Genius comes into play. So this isn't going to be part of my tutorial. Well, this isn't even a tutorial. I just want to make a video about this because that was the first thing I wanted to do. So here it is, it's ready. I'm going to eject the drive and put it into here. Ejecting the drive. Almost lost the SD card. Remember it goes up, kind of upside down when you pop it into the TF1 slot. If you don't make a good copy of the firmware, it won't power on at all. But the firmware looks good. And it's loading. There you go. There's a few games installed already on it. But anyways, it's working. That's one that's the first method I showed using Rufus to create a backup and then
copy that backup image onto another SD card of any size that's 16 gigabytes or larger. Second method will be using the firmware file found on the download page. And so I'll try to include it with this video if possible. Maybe not.